Welcome to the new book releases of the week of November the 13th. I feel that this week's list is pretty balanced, but there will be timestamps. Thank you for clicking on this video. I'm Morgan, and let's get started with some fiction. First off, we should probably also mention the disclaimer that I am going to mispronounce people's names, places' names, specifically once we get into fantasy and, you know, the made-up names. But I'm very sorry, I hope it offends no one, that I can't say people's names. <laughs> Our first book is going to be Before We Say Goodbye by Tojikaza Kawaguchi. This is book four in the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series, which I didn't even know it was series before then. It takes place a year before the series began in this unique entry point into the Cafe Unicoli Unicala, examining the lasting effects of regret and how to get past it. And then we have The Little Liar by Mitch Abram. I'm not going to read the whole description, just some snippets to get you a feel of what it's about. Best-selling author returns with a powerful novel that moves from a coastal Greek city during the Holocaust to America, where the Antoine lives of three survivors are forever changed by the perils of deception and the grace of redemption. It's his first novel set during the Holocaust, where it interweaves the stories of Nico, his brother Sebastian, their schoolmate Franny, and the Nazi officer who radically changed their lives. As the decades pass, Abel revels in the consequences of what they said, did, and endured. Narrated by the voice of truth itself, it is the timeless story about the harm we inflict with our deceits and the power of love to ultimately redeem us. Those might have been heavy to start the week off with, so now we move into fantasy to take you somewhere magical, starting with The Narrow Road Between Desires by Patrick Rothfuss. This is a stunning reimagining of The Lightning Tree. It's expanded to twice its previous length and lavishly illustrated by Nate Taylor. It's the standalone story of Bast tracing the old ways of making and breaking, following its heart even when doing so goes against his better judgment. After all, what good is caution if it keeps him from danger and delight? And then we have a more cozy, light-hearted one. A Fellowship of Baker's Magic by Jay Penner. A human, a dwarf, and an elf walk into a bake-off. In the heart of Aidenshire, where elfish enchantments and dwarven delights rule, our Letta Starstone, a human confectionist, works twice as hard perfecting her unique blend of baking and apothecary herbs. When an orc neighbor secretly enters her creation into the prestigious elven baking battle, our Letta faces a dilemma. While competing, she'll set off on a journey of mouth-watering pastries, self-discovery, heartwarming friendships, and romance, while questioning whether winning the baking battle is a true prize. Escape to Aidenshire for a delightful, cozy fantasy where every twist is a treat and every turn is a step closer to home. And our last fantasy is going to be a touch different as it has a twinge of horror mixed in and it's set in our world. The Star and the Strange Moon by Constance Sayers. 1968, Gemma Turner once dreamed of stardom. Now the actress is on the cusp of obscurity when she's offered the lead in a radical new horror film. Gemma believes her luck has changed, but her dream is about to turn into a nightmare. One night, between the shadows of an alleyway, Gemma disappears on set and is never seen again. 2007, Gemma Turner's disappearance is one of Hollywood's greatest mysteries, one that's captivated film student Christopher Kent ever since he saw Le Etrange Loon for the first time. The screenings only happen once a decade, and each time there is a new, impossible footage of Gemma that shouldn't exist. Curiosity drives Christopher to unravel the truth, but answers to the film's mystery may leave him trapped by it forever. For something truly out of this world, we have sci-fi, starting with Entry 7 in the Murderbot Diaries, Systems Collapse by Martha Wells. This is, you know, the very highly popular series that I still have not started. Next, though, we move into a debut novel called Critical Habitat by Terrence King. This is a fantastical sci-fi dystopian action adventure that bends sci-fi and the hero's journey tropes and archetypes. Also gotten very positive reviews for this. What does it mean to be a rebel, a hero, or the destroyer of habitat and civilization? As a devastated world recovers from war and plight, an unlikely heroine emerges to attempt to rescue distressed rebels from the government's corruption, controlling the ration food supply from a rogue general trying to steal the only known honeybees and the earth itself fights back. Our YAs this week are wildly different, but we're going to start with the fantasy one. It's called The Legend of Wildlings by Brittany Brewer. This one has received so many positive reviews from the ARC reviewers. This is a story of a girl with nothing left to lose, an island filled with magic and mystery and the legend that could destroy it all. What if the legend was wrong? At 15, Ember Lorthbrook has spent half her life passing through the Galloway foster system, though strange occurrences seem to follow her around like a cloud of bad luck. Even if her guardians aren't completely put off by the rain clouds that form inside or the footstools that suddenly transform into pigs, her lavender eyes flecked with ash always seal her fate. Then we have a thriller, Only She Came Back by Margaret Harrison. On July 28th at 6.30 p.m., Kiri Dunsmore walks out of the desert wearing her boyfriend's sweatshirt, covered in his blood. Dazed and on the verge of unconsciousness, she tells the cashier that he's still out there, most likely dead. The disappearance of Callum Massey, a survival guru with hundreds of thousands of YouTube followers, rocks the nation, and Kiri is the prime suspect. 
Romance is in the air for these next books, as we start with Do Your Worst by Rosie Dannon. Riley Rhodes finally has the chance to turn her family's knack for the supernatural into a legitimate business when she's hired to break the curse on an infamous Scottish castle. Used to working alone in her alienating occupation, she's pleasantly surprised to meet a handsome stranger upon arrival, until he tries to get her fired. Fresh off of a professional scandal, Clark Edgeware can't allow a self-proclaimed curse breaker to threaten his last chance for redemption. After he fails to get Riley kicked off his survey site, he vows to avoid her. Unfortunately for him, she vows to get even. Riley expects the curse to do her dirty work for her by driving Clark away, but instead they keep finding themselves in close proximity. Too close. We start off the holiday books with Claws in Effect by Piper Rain. Two strangers who couldn't be more opposite find themselves on an unexpected cross-country road trip days before Christmas where whatever can go wrong does. He's an army ranger. She's a baker. He's organized and rigid. She's carefree and messy. He doesn't do relationships. She's following her heart. His family chat blows up his phone. She's just buried her last living relative. Then we have a rom-com with The Mom-Com by Adriana Mather. Maddie DeLuca is returning home for the holidays with her nine-year-old son, only it's not the triumphant return she might have hoped for. She recently broke down on reality TV baking show, letting the entire country know how she feels like a colossal failure, and she can be certain her mother will remind her of all the ways she hasn't lived up to expectations over the years. We end the week with some pulse-pounding thrillers, starting with Christina Henry's Good Girls Don't Die. Celia wakes up in a house that's supposed to be hers. There's a little girl who claims to be her daughter and a man who claims to be her husband, but Celia knows this family and this life is not hers. Allie was supposed to be on a fun weekend trip, but then her friend's boyfriend unexpectedly invites the group to a remote cabin in the woods. No one else believes Allie, but that she's sure something about this trip is very, very wrong. Maggie just wants to be home with her daughter, but she's in a dangerous situation and she doesn't know who put her there or why. She'll have to fight with everything she has to survive. Three women, three stories, only one way out. This captivating novel will keep readers guessing until the very end. Then we have The Professor by Lauren Nozit. On a spring afternoon in Athens, Georgia, Ethan Haddock is discovered in his apartment, dead, apparently by his own hand. His fatality immediately garners media attention, not because his death reflects a troubling increase of depression and mental health issues among college students, but because the media have, has caught wind of a scandal. His professor, Dr. Verena Sabic has been taken in for questioning, and there are rumors of his death is a result of a bad romance. A Title IX investigation is opened, the professor is suspended, and social media crusaders and trolls alike are out for blood. Lastly, we have A Very Inconvenient Scandal by Jacqueline Mitchard. Stunned by her recently widowed father's reckless behavior, a young woman must learn to navigate a new world, where the people she should trust most have become strangers she cannot trust at all. Frankie Attleboro returns home to Cape Cod with thrilling news. She's met the love of her life, and they're getting married with a baby on the way. That's the moment her father makes his own jaw-dropping announcement. At 60, he's getting married as well to Frankie's best friend Ariel, who is also pregnant and due soon. That's all for this week's list. Maybe you found something to add to your TBR. I know I certainly did. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll go check out some of my other ones like unboxings or reviews. And if you like my style, you'll subscribe so you can be notified every Monday of new books coming out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an awesome day and finding something great to read. I'll see y'all next time.